Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday Morning Prayers, this bright and early Friday morning, um, or for anyone who is catching up online later on today uh, or throughout the weekend, welcome. We're glad that you tuned in and joined us for this time of worship and this time of prayer. I'll give everyone just a couple of moments as it's bright and early and um, everything to get situated, to get your cuppa before we uh, before we fully begin um, and, and dive into, into some of our liturgy. So as everyone's coming in and getting ready, we're beginning to still our hearts for worship throughout um, the morning, throughout the day, and into the weekend. We're orienting ourselves towards God and towards each other. All right. Let's go ahead and begin. O oh God, you summon the day to dawn. You teach the morning to waken the earth. Great is your name, great is your love. For you the valleys shall sing for joy, the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Great is your name, great is your love. For you the monarchs of the earth shall bow, the poor and persecuted shall shout for joy. Great is your name, great is your love. Your love and mercy shall last forever, fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise. Great is your name, great is your love. Let us pray. Early in the morning, when the world was young, you made life in all its beauty and terror. You gave birth to all we know. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, when the world least expected it, a newborn child crying in a cradle announced that you had come among us, that you were one of us. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, surrounded by respectable liars, religious leaders, anxious statesmen, and silent friends, you accepted the penalty for doing good, for being God. You shouldered and suffered the cross. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, a voice in a guarded graveyard and footsteps in the dew proved that you had risen, that you came back to those and for those who had forgotten, denied, and destroyed you. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, in the multicolored company of your church on earth and in heaven, we celebrate your creation, your life, your death and resurrection, your interest in us. And so to you we pray. Lord, bring new life where we are worn and tired. New love where we have turned hard-hearted. Forgiveness where we feel hurt and where we have wounded, and bring the joy and freedom of your Holy Spirit where we are prisoners of ourselves. To all and to each where regret is real, God pronounces pardon and grants us the right to begin again. Thanks be to God. Amen. Listen for the word which God has spoken. Speak, Lord, to our speaking. Speak, Lord, to our listening. Speak, Lord, to our soul's deep understanding. And our reading this morning will come from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 
If I speak in the tongues of mortals and angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease, and as for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now, we see in a mirror dimly. But then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. We will now have our prayers for the week. I will pray. Um, feel free to listen, to pray along with me, or... Um, along with me to pray your own prayers for those you know and those you love. Let us pray. God, we lift up to you the world around us, a world that seems to be in many levels of crisis, crisis of our ecology, crisis of our relationships with one another, in crisis with the future of technology. Let us be faithful and loving witnesses to you. Let us help be guides into a future world where love and grace and forgiveness are the most important. Over and above money making or legacy or rule following. Let us be prophets of love and of peace, a hard-won peace, a peace that sees us fight for the oppressed, for the lowly, for those who are harmed and wounded by the powerful. Let us fight hatred with love, but a bold love and a strong love. We pray for the leaders of the world and those who are taking part in COP26. Please guide them, guide their thoughts, guide their ideas, and let them keep in mind the people of the world, especially the poorest of us who are most affected by climate change. Convict their hearts of the money that fills their pockets, that guides their voting. Let them see that following money in trying to change what science says just to benefit the short term will ultimately lead us down a path of tragedy and it will see the most vulnerable in our world harmed most devastatingly convict them and guide them let them see the truth and let them see what needs to be done even though it is hard even though it is difficult and even though it might make them unpopular among some We pray for those in the world who are engaged actively in peacemaking. Those who are at the front lines of skirmishes, of fights, of protests, of change. Help them to rest when they find time and give them courage and boldness when it is their time to speak. We thank you for their work. 
We know it is vital in times when people feel like they're getting further and further apart and unable to have conversations or to have debates. There are some things that are not up for debate, things about people's value, about how we love and care for the most marginal. Those are not for debate, but we need to have people to sit at the table with. So help those peacemakers build bridges so that we can have conversations with people that bring about grace and love. God, we pray for our country, for the direction of the UK and of Scotland. Help our leaders be compassionate, to be wise. We pray for the leadership of the Church of Scotland and the leadership in each church and each parish. Give us all humility and grace, but also courage, and again, rest when we can find it. God, we pray for our church, for our parish, for the people in our neighborhoods. Be with each and every one of them as they rise this morning and as we head to the weekend. Help this be a weekend of refreshment, a time when interactions bring happiness and love, encouragement, and again, windows into your love that shines through our hearts into one another. We pray for our friends and family, those near to us and those far away. Be with us all. Be with us in your spirit that you sent to be among us. And all these things we ask in your son's name. Amen. So may God bless us. May God keep us in the Spirit's care and lead our lives with love. May Christ's warm welcome shine from our hearts and Christ's own peace prevail through this and every day till greater life shall call. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning or whenever you get a chance. And we hope to see you on Sunday morning for worship. Bye-bye, everyone.